Okay, now even this is all was posted by church just so of course you know exactly where idea of this coming but I took my time to listen to that. I hope you were listening as well because what he said were very important. So he tackled the idea of succession and of course any church like you heard him say verbatim when it comes to a church that has to that is established for the sole purpose like an enterprise for the son to take over it is dead on arrival so he's trying to give you a particular conditioning in the mind and also going further again he got to talk about how the system exists in the winner's chapel now i got my hand on the document the mandate if you read the book the mandate you see the succession procedure of apostleship in this ministry. Open, it's in the hand of everybody. I'm gonna take my time to discuss that here, probably in my next video, so we get to look at if what he said was actually very true, okay? Now, there's a couple of misunderstandings I could find compared to what he said, but of course, if you are watching this video right now, you can make the corrections in the comments before I get to look at it in the next video extensively, especially on that particular part of succession, so that we get to understand what does exist in that particular ministry. And of course, you yourself, you should not be tossed here and there with respect to what you might see happen tomorrow. But the point I want to discuss in this video is the fact where he says, don't call your sons and daughters into ministry. You know that somebody died and then we don't know what to do. You know what to do, step by step. And this happens within three weeks. This takes place between 12, 12 weeks. It's stated. God is counting to determine where next to place. If church becomes your personal property, you have lost it. It becomes a family property, is dead. Many charismatic churches die before their founders die. Why? They own it. It's an enterprise to them. What cost Jesus his life? Don't call your sons and daughters to ministry. You may frustrate their destiny. That was a strong hitting point, I would say, in this particular conversation because I asked myself a question. Can you yourself call your own children into ministry even when they decide to become pastors on their own? So I went back to the videos, of course, of the two sons who were talking at the bridge, the main interview where the idea of Isaac leaving was being extracted from. And they both talked about their vision or would I say how they came about becoming pastors. The first son said he never wanted to be a pastor. That was something he was sure he never wanted to be until he heard God audibly in a hotel or in a motel where he went to seek the face of God. And this is what Isaac also had to talk about his own person when it comes to his vision and his call as well. Pastor Isaac, to also share your own experience and how you found this purpose of yours or your vision for life. I think many want to know. All right, so um, mine is a bit of a different experience in many, many ways. Okay. Um, I wasn't looking for one when I found one. Um, it was my sophomore year in Oral Roberts University, and that's why I have such a strong tie to that school, um, that prestigious university. I just finished classes uh, for the day. I think it was an afternoon period where I had some time and went to the hostel and slept, and I saw what you would consider as a vision. I saw myself back in Nigeria. Now I was in the US. I saw myself back in Nigeria. Saw myself, I think, around the Yanopaja area. And um, saw myself on what we call an Okada, right? The vision opened up. And I saw a very young chap. I wouldn't give the details of that. I've never shared that publicly as it were. But then that's when I got a clue of what God's plan was for my life. Now, without me having so much detail, surprisingly, I wrote it down, kept it in my wallet. Then came 2006 when I began to cry for God's plan and purpose for my life. And then he said, I've already told you what it is. And so he took me back to what my purpose was already unveiled four years prior. Now, it's, it's amazing that sometimes God may have shown you his assignment for your life and you didn't know that is what it was or is. I had no interpretation for it at the time, but the Lord moved me to write it down. I still had that paper. I scribbled this vision on four years prior in 2006. So when I was asking him, Lord, I want to know what your plan and purpose is for my life, he said, go back. I've told you before. And I was wondering, you told me when, how? How did it happen? When did it happen? And this is where God's plan and purpose for my life for my generation came in, right? I had no idea. And I want to also say that you may not understand all the details of the vision initially, 
But now in the phase that I find myself, I still find myself referring back to the original vision. Surprisingly, when I came back about a year ago, I still have the document I typed out. This is as far back as 2007. In the original form, typed, sealed, I still had a look at it, and I saw God unveiling that. I told you this, 2006. It's compared to what I showed you 2003, so three years prior, sorry, not four years prior. Uh, and then now with what I'm telling you today, you still find it hidden in the same document. So mine was a bit of... Um, looking back to what he already showed me, because at the time I wasn't asking for vision, but I found myself at the point in that vision where I was, if I remember correctly, sobbing. I saw the state of my generation in a little boy, had no idea, had no understanding of it. And then I woke up with so much, so much concern, so much deep-rooted concern for what I saw in this vision that I was moved to write it down, kept it in my wallet. I changed wallet several times. I kept moving the paper from wallet to wallet to wallet. 2006, asking and crying to God, what is your plan for my life? He said, go back, I've shown it to you before. And then from there, he began to unveil scripture. Uh, my brother stated that it's very important to ensure that there is scriptural background. Now, an initial vision, I didn't know it was a vision, I just wrote it down, so there was no scripture. But now scripture upon scripture upon scripture showing me exactly what his plan for the first phase, as I knew it then, would be. Um, and then uh, I've seen that with phase coming here and there, new phases, sorry, coming here and there, there's also scriptural backups, but it doesn't deviate from the original vision, right? Uh, so for me, that was my experience. Um, I didn't have to lock myself down. Uh, I didn't do that. It came to me without looking for it. But when it came to proving the vision, all right, I remember spending, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, not less than six months. Again, I didn't want to do it, right? So day after day, I found myself opening the Bible and saying, Lord, speak to me, confirming that this is your plan for my life. Day one, where suit seven then. Day one, day two, uh, first month, second month, third month, and I documented all of those things down. Still have the documents still today where the scriptures were stated. And then it got to the point where I said, okay, I surrender, I agree. Right? In life, it's very dangerous to take a step comparing yourself to another. So, listening to the person of Isaac as well, got to talk about him since he's the main focal point right here based on his written decision as being propagated. Now, like I will repeat again, my dear friends, you see, recently this particular pastor also have left the ministry. Not as if he left on the ground of Gra Gra. Mm -mm. He didn't leave on Gra Gra ground. He left, he's been on the, a pastor for the ministry for a long time and has now decided to start up his own ministry with the blessings of Bishop Poyedepo and that he got. It was still posted by just Sajis. So, sir, congratulations to you and your lovely wife and uh, may the ministry move to the permanent site. You see, that's one thing here. You, one day you will leave. Pastors, there is no church where people don't leave. Hello? You better know that. Jesus is the greatest pastor. One day, he lost everybody, <laughs> remaining only 12. <laughs> he said, will you also go away because I want to start afresh? Yeah. Amen. Just love people. Yes. Just have your, their goodwill in your heart. Yes. Amen. Yes. Wish everybody well. Yes. It will remain well with you and your ministry. Yes. Wish everybody well. There's no shouting about it. You are not the savior, and you are not the owner of the floor. He owns the floor. Amen. And many will be called into ministry from that ministry and do great things for God. You can imagine if I kept uh, David here all his life to be head usher. <laughs> Amen. See what God is doing through him. Now, even though this particular video might look like on the negative side when people just decide to leave or something, for a fact, he has no issue with people leaving the ministry because he understands as well what happens in the Bible and the way he got to explain it. So it's not as if he's holding on to people, oh, you came onto my ministry, you grew from my ministry, you can't leave. If you leave, this will happen to you. Unlike many of these churches that operate like as if they are witchcraft, whereby if a pastor decides to leave the ministry, it's like they are going to curse you or something and they will say, oh, you grew from my ministry, people need from my ministry. Now if you leave, people are going to leave with you. And unto those who chose to scatter this ministry, especially the pastors who left this ministry and left with members of this ministry which they do not account for as individuals but the ministry account for lord let their wives be barren let all fruitfulness be cast from them i curse their generations i curse their generations I cast their generations before them and after them. Let them be chaos in their families. Let them be chaos in their families. Let your pestilence.
sickness fall upon them from this day. Let there be sickness from the root of their families to the generations that are not born. Epileptic, hepatitis, HIV, madness. Let it fall upon them. For him, he doesn't care about that. And that's one thing I, I think he's an example for. Now, I hope the exemplification is not just in the words, but also when it comes to practicality because talk itself is easy. We can sit down here and talk and say whatever we want to do, but being real, like I always say here, we have to be as real as possible, is when it comes to the reality. Do you understand? Just that, of course, when you're living, don't live with any church things. Don't, don't take over the particular branch of the church. If you are living, just carry your load and just go like that and go and start off again. Like what happened with the... And Winners Chapel Ghana and they have been struggling since I don't know if the court has finally taken over Winners Chapel Ghana with the pastor that decided to leave and take the church and every <laughs> anyway you can take the church building and structure but you cannot take the people even though he still has uh, members I would say but I think that particular case has been solved right now I don't know but we discussed about it last time when we were looking at the ministry and those who had left do you understand so it's very important as well that in as much as these things will happen in ministry whether you are leaving or whether you are being sacked because last time he sacked about 40 pastors for unproductivity i would say like it trend like it trended so these things ha happening is very normal but the bo the main idea of this video is for you to understand his personality and his ideas that he pushes onto his audience when it comes to the, the notion of family business so at least you watching right now as a winner's chapel member should know that his mindset about it is that there is actually a lead organogram in the mandate i have a document if you are on my telegram channel i'm going to put Put it, post a document there and you can also get to download it yourself and maybe i'll put a link in the description section as well if you're watching me on youtube so where you can find the document download it and study your church mandate and how things are functioning because some of you when i'm talking about some things it will look as if i am speaking gibberish because you are not informed so because i'm informed i'll take my time to help you understand as well so you check the description section you see the particular or the pin comment you see that particular um document you can have it yourself and study it to understand your church and how the succession plan is and probably tomorrow if it becomes an issue which i pray should never become an issue anywhere then you can be able to have an argument as someone that is a member of the church and should follow principles based on what you have laid down for you but like you see him right now talking some of you always say oh why do pastors come and then that's talking about other churches they should focus on the message he is also someone that is a figure when it comes to nigerian christianity or nigerian pentecostalism so if you see him talking about other churches the ones that are going to just disappear, fizzle out, or the ones that are just preaching blessing, 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 and while the ones that are preaching cursing, 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 that's why they are not growing. Remember what we looked at in our last video based on the mandate of what the church itself is meant to be preaching. All of that is also in the church mandate. If you read the church mandate, you will learn a lot about how the ministry itself operates. And it's good that they keep these documents public so that people can get to read and understand the ministry even before becoming part. But the thing is that most of you are part of the ministry or members. You don't even know what is the head or the tail. And, but when they now start making statements that are very factual based on what they do, you now become <laughs> what is going on or what is going on here. No, no nothing they scared to speak on the public that is not actually stated in the church system so please i recommend you actually get to read that book especially if you are a man especially if you are a member of winners so in my next video i'm going to be looking at the book itself that particular succession plan and i'm going to be doing some contrasting as well with what he said himself so that we have a better understanding of what actually is obtainable in the ministry but tell me what you think about this right here okay because of the source where this particular information is coming from probably you might see a video tomorrow of bishop david yodepo praying for the son and then launching him out and telling him oh because come on this is his son and then of course probably there might be a public show of that for people to have clarity because at this point people are still saying that this is fake news i understand it's okay you wouldn't even expect that to happen but probably also it can be done privately like with this particular pastor that also has decided to you know set up his own ministry with the blessing of the church not as if there was any issue as well there could also be that form of uh, you know him praying for the son and telling the son come on ride on but let me tell you something like i said before Isaac Oyedepo has been on this journey for a while. It did not just happen overnight. For him to change his social media handles to 
um, Anazao generation and then always talking about his generation. I mean, anytime he's preaching while he was in the church or while he's in the church, I think he should still be in right now. He's always talking about revival, his generation, the youth. And if you listen to the last part of the father's comment when in the video I played, he talked about he don't even know if the, if one of them is going to be in a special, you know. Don't call your sons and daughters to ministry. You may frustrate their destiny. Don't. You don't have to be a minister to serve God. I've been a servant of God for how long? Since 76, I've been running crusade. Who is a servant of God? Somebody who's serving God's interest. Allow them to be positioned where they belong. You will have rest. Maybe one of them is a God or they John D. Rockefeller of this generation. Helping to form the needs of humanity. Rescue many who don't know the truth. To be free. To live. Till they know the truth. All these churches who are growing. You know they are just preaching blessing, blessing. Well done. You are preaching courses that where your church is not growing. To bring the awareness or would I say the knowledge of God in a new dimension. You don't even know. You understand so probably the father himself and this particular video like i played as well it is three years ago it was posted so it's not as if it's that long but even as well um isaac oedipo has been on this whole outreach crusade and then vision for the youth as well and i would say probably he has discussed this as well with the father before because his family is family business family business now you are vexing in the comments family business is like ah just like bishop oedipo said one time He's going about his father's business. Jesus said, I'm going about my father's business. Some of you, <laughs> if you want to understand me with, with like, a, like, like a paper, no, you will not understand me like that. I'm like two sides of the coin. I speak on this side, I speak on this side. And the goal is to bring that balance in understanding. There are people that are going to be right wing. Some people are going to be left wing. But for me, I am defense wing. So people will always say, George, why, do, why is it that you always sit on the fence? The only way you can understand and see the perspective of what is happening on the right and on the left is if you sit on the fence. If I come and I'm sitting on one side, how would I know what is happening on the other side? How would I be able to properly have a view or understand what the other people understand? That's why I like to sit on the fence. So I can be able to present the fact and tell you, this is what is happening on this side. Oh. This is what is happening on this side. Oh. Uh -huh. So what do you think? Uh -huh. Do you see that particular point? I am not on that's why you see you say george hey you have changed you are no more giving what to how will i give what to when there is no what to to give i don't come and look for who to give lambasting if you fake a miracle one i'll give it to you like the ubat angel and the rest of them no <laughs> those ones are they, they know themselves but when it comes to facts like this we have to make sure we pay attention i'm looking forward to the next video if you want to see the next video probably it's going to be appear on your screen if you're watching me on youtube or you see it linked in the in comment as well. See you. My name remains George. Only to rob me and show